What's up guys, it's Drac, and this is a box. This is actually a box from Connex, and I am very excited to open it up because they've been doing a lot of stuff that's uh, pretty nerfy, or at least nerf compatible. They've been making their K-Force line, which is blasters that you build. And they have these kind of modules inside, you can see, that allow you to fire darts. And this is their revolver model, and so I'm very excited to take this apart and build it. Uh, after hanging out with them at Toy Fair a little bit, they agreed to send me a couple of review models when they were ready, and so I guess the K25X Rotoshot Blaster is finally ready, and its claiming range is up to 75 feet, but none of that matters if it's not put together, so let's get to building. Alrighty guys, so this is the final overview segment for the Kinex Blaster. It was actually kind of stressful to build for a couple of reasons. The instructions did not make clear that these needed to have all four posts facing outwards. And so you notice in that video where I'm building it that I had to invert and flip them because I originally built it wrong, so to speak. But there's a lot of, I guess, things in this that as an engineer personally confuse me. While I was building this, I thought it would be really good uh, for dart storage. And I was like, that's what it's for, right? You store two darts, but it doesn't really grip the darts. And of course, they completely roll out of these uh, two under portions. And I was like, well, maybe this thing is dart storage. And it also is not dart storage. Also connects uh, pieces don't really lend themselves well to storing darts necessarily because of how, I guess, sharp they are. They have a bad habit of pinching the darts. The Connect darts themselves are excellent, but a few confusing things in the design for me personally, and I get that building it is half the fun and that it's not really to be reviewed as a blaster so much as it should be reviewed as a toy build, like, outside thing. But here, uh, the handle is not super duper comfortable. It really forces you to angle into it weird, and these pieces get in the way. And then the trigger really drives me crazy because, A, it's very flimsy. It's four separate joints instead of one. It could have just been one piece. And then this slowly, as you're playing with it, just comes off. It's not held on by anything but friction. It's like a rubberized piece, not necessarily a plastic piece. Uh, so over time, as you're playing with it, you can see each trigger pull pulls it a little bit further down. And maybe mine's just loose, but it's come off a couple of times while playing with it. And then the most, I guess, strange thing to me is that the force you're putting on the system right there always feels like since it's so far in front of the uh, trigger and handle area, it feels like you're always trying to break it, like you're trying to pull this whole unit up. Now this is obviously a lower foregrip to make this a two-handed blaster, and this and this seem to be just complete and utter nonsense. Unless they're for you to hold it this way for like some Omega Gangster mode, I don't know what the purpose of like adding this onto one side and this onto one side is, unless it was parallel, but it it isn't symmetrical, and so since it isn't symmetrical, it just confuses me. Why is one side of the blaster fully decorated and the other side completely flat? It's just, again, really, really strange. Now, maybe these have something to do with another kit. Maybe if I get more Connects blasters to review, this will make sense because they allow you to lock on other blasters and make 
DOS Uber Blaster. But until then, it's very confusing for me as to why I built half of a aesthetic kind of thing onto a blaster that is so thin and longer than it needs to be. A few people mentioned to me that it should be like closer to here, but I just followed the instructions and built it as it should be. So I don't really know. There are other blasters that are much closer to their plunger assembly, but this is just how it was meant to be built in the package. Performance is actually quite good. Again, the Connects darts are excellent darts. They're a little bit heavier than Elite darts, and they're just very sweet. They're relatively accurate, and they've got this fun kind of compressible honeycomb thing going on up top. So you can see that they're all going relatively straight, but ranges for distance are a little sub-elite. So it's like having a jolt that has a revolver attached because, spoiler, it's a jolt that happens to have a revolver attached. But the cool thing about this is that the parts are useful. Like, this is realistically a cylinder. This reminds me a lot of, like, a Sorrow-X turret with a relatively perfect seal to a plunger. There would be a really cool way to do, like, some NIC-level stuff with just the Kinex barrel and maybe some uh, PETG coming out the front. Like, it's an interesting thing. It's a kit, not so much a blaster. The blaster falls flat on a couple of notes, but the kit overall was fun to build, even if it was confusing. It reminded me a lot of playing with that four-letter L word that we don't talk about while reviewing Connects blasters, but it was, it was a fun experiment. I enjoyed playing with it, and I hope that I get to make more of them for you in the future, because eventually I want to get a bunch of the flywheel caged ones and just make a monster blaster that holds like eight magazines or whatever. That would be really cool. We'd call it the octopus shot, but, uh, or the octo shot, uh, shout out to make it go up in Canada. This is, this is sweet. This is the blaster. Performs marginally well. Fun to build. I think we've covered everything. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this type of content.